How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. Here we are in round two from August 28th Locals and uh, we got a pretty interesting matchup here. We've got Phantom Knight Burning Abyss uh, versus Eldic Zombie. Um, basically your traditional zombie world Ballard Rock Turbo but with a little hint of the Eldritch. I wouldn't say a hint but uh, you know a pretty sizable Eldritch engine in there. And uh, like always, let's go ahead and take a look at the poll results after they go ahead and roll those dice to see who you guys thought was going to win the round two matchup. And to no surprise, a majority of the people voting for Phantom Knight BA. And to be totally honest, I do not blame you guys. So let's go ahead and see how this one plays out. Zombie going first, setting four and passing. No shocker there, especially with the Eldritch engine. And uh, as uh, I think our BA player enters the uh, main phase, we're going to see him activate the uh, Scarlet Sanguine, which of course will allow him to summon the Golden Lord from the deck, or I believe any zombie from the deck if he controls Golden Lord, but of course if he does not control Golden Lord, he has to summon Golden Lord, but that's completely fine because that will make his other um, Eldritch Traps live, his other Golden Land uh, Traps like Hakaro and Conquistador, um, which could be okay in this matchup. Um, but I don't know if it's ultimately going to be enough. The Phantom Knight deck is very consistent at what it does. And uh, Zombie World, like one of the main gimmicks of this sort of deck, doesn't really affect it too much. Uh, I feel like that's where a deck like Zombie Elitch was going to snag most of its wins are just off of those kind of gimmicks where it's like, you know, Super Poly under Zombie World, all these different things. Like, um, But I don't think that uh, really affects the Phantom Knight deck too much because all you care about are level 3s. Um, all your monsters are still staying dark, and they still keep their Phantom Knight names, which is, like, the most important thing at the end of the day. So, it looks like on the resolution of Kagamucha Knight, we're going to see him activate the Conquistador, which will summon itself and pop a monster non-target. And that'll successfully clear the Kagamucha Knight. Um, and we're also going to see him set Shade Brigadine and special summon the Shade Brigadine. Now, I don't totally agree with that Conquistador play. The Phantom Knight deck does play a ton, and I mean a ton of extenders. Um, so you could have very easily had just like wasted a Conquistador there by following it up with like a Psychic Tracker, Wielder, uh, a Boots, uh, even a Gilasaurus, you name it. He could have easily gotten into his Chair Beanie because that's all he really needs to get into, and that nothing else really matters past that. So I, I don't think that was really the best Conquistador. I think he just got lucky in the fact that his opponent did not open another level 3 extender. And it uh, looks like he opened a copy of Red Eyes Black Dragon, the Deadly B7. Extremely unfortunate. Also looks like he opened another copy of Kagamucha Knight, uh, which is also not helping his case right now. But it uh, looks like the, uh, the Shade Brigadine will be able to stick to the field, allowing him to access a Link 2, and it's going to be Nightmare Phoenix. We'll see Nightmare Phoenix activate on summon, discarding the effect failure, not really doing him too good here. He's going to go ahead and target the set closest to his deck, or up near the top right of the field. And we'll see what that card is, if he's going to change it. He's going to go ahead and take a look at the graveyard first. Uh, seeing a Kagamucha Knight, Shade Brigadine, and a Cloak, and a Valor. The Shade Brigadine really being the only, or not Shade Brigadine, the Cloak rather, being the only valuable uh, card in the graveyard at the moment. Uh, being able to search him a Phantom Knight monster, I believe, uh, or any like the Phantom Knight's card. And he's going to go ahead and activate Golden Lord, or Golden Land forever. Uh, which is a counter trap that is going to negate the Nightmare Phoenix and destroy by tributing off that Conquistador. And I mean, yeah, I guess like, yeah, using the uh, Conquistador makes sense. Uh, or the, not the Conquistador, but the uh, Golden Land Forever makes sense. Because like, if you're going to lose the counter trap, regardless, why not clear the body off their field, right? And it uh, looks like after that resolves, we're going to see him use Hikaru immediately to clear the Cloak Engrave. Uh, which I guess I understand why, but um, I don't think it was 100% necessary. Um, I don't know, like I don't really know what else he would like grab there that would help him uh, so much off of that. But I mean, clear it out of the field now, so he doesn't have access to it later. So, uh, and our Phantom Knight pay player will pass turn after being met with a barrage of trap cards, not really being able to play through them. And uh, now we're just going to switch the 
uh, Hakero to attack alongside the Golden Lord. And he's going to swing in for 25 and 18 from both monsters, respectively. And uh, putting him down to 3,700. And we're going to see a Super Poly here discarding Ghost Bell, getting rid of both those monsters to go for uh, the Eldritch Fusion, which comes out at 38, and that's actually going to be enough to go for an OTK. Um, wow, just going ahead and read uh, the Super Poly, make sure that was all correct. Uh, you might as well read it real quick, just because, like, that is game right there by a hundred. Um, burning all those traps was enough, making it so he, uh, cleared the entire field, and j literally just had enough to go in for the OTK there, so. Really cool to see the Golden Lord Fusion, though, I have to admit. But as we enter game two, I want to mention a quick shout-out to Imperium Duelist, guys. If you're looking for some amazing sleeves, binders, deck boxes, and more, check them out at the link below. You can use my discount code WINNERKILLIS enough at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. And if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, please do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description of all my videos. If you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel, and it helps out a ton. So our Phantom Knight player going first here, normaling the cloak, special summoning boots, and uh, that's going to go ahead and get him right into the Cherubini. So it looks like this time around we might actually get to see this Phantom Knight combo be pulled off since he was able to stick two level 3 monsters to the field. And Cherubini is going to send uh, Graf, Mel Branch of the Burning Abyss as cost in order for it to gain the attack of the level 3 that it sent. Um, so dodging Ash Blossom there, but of course he could still Ash the Graf if he wanted to, but it looks like he does not have any response. Graf will summon Seer from the deck, and it looks like our Phantom Knight player also opened that one of Called by the Grave, which is going to be really, really strong here for that uh, Hand Trap Resilience. And um, that Seer will bring back the Cherubini as he links for the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardiche, and he'll go ahead and use its effect uh, to send a copy of Torn Scales to add or set, rather, a copy of Fogblade. And right now has a pretty loaded graveyard. Has the Cloak, has Boots, and has Torn Scales. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and activate the Cloak. And that will get him a search, I believe, of any any the Phantom Knights card. Or any Phantom Knights monster. Um, I know the uh, Boots adds the spell or trap. Um, but I think Cloak adds the monsters. Um, so it looks like he'll add uh, the Stain Greaves, and since the Phantom Knight was banished, Phantom Knight card was banished, that'll trigger the Torn Scales uh, to summon itself from the Grave, and then on the summon of Torn Scales, that will trigger Stain Greaves to summon itself from the Hand, having himself a nice little uh, rank 3 play ready here. Um, could probably see the Leviers, as uh, that is one of the combo lines this deck can take. Uh, some builds don't play it, some builds do play it. Um, I know one of my friends that has played this deck for a long time uh, has gone the, the double levier route for Utopic Future, or in recent builds has kind of sidestepped that uh, to just save resources um, and uh, not like uh, play so hard into things like Nibiru, if you will. Um, going in for like, car like cards like Appalooza, for example, he could go for right here instead of going for the double levier. Um, I mean, it may require a bit more extenders, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, it is a bit safer, and Appalooza is a hell of a card at the end of the day. Uh, so we're going to see him Ixies into Levier the Sea Dragon. He'll detach to summon one of his banished monsters, or a banished monster, level 4 or lower. And that is going to summon the Cloak back to the field, which on special summon, uh, he can target the Rusty, make it gain 800, and it'll turn itself to defense. So getting that Rusty up to 2900. Uh, which can be kind of relevant, since that's a card you want to stick to the field, uh, especially if you're pairing Fog Blades with it in the grave to bring out a Break Sword and trigger its effect to pop a card, which is a nice little bit of interruption to have, uh, especially in a matchup like this, being able to clear back row uh, on, you know, whatever you want to, that nice access to in-engine spot removal. Now we're going to see Wings activate, thanks to Gloves, dumping that to the grave, Basically just acting as a monster born, similar to Fogblade, and making the second Levier to detach and bring back the gloves, detaching the uh, the Stain Greaves this time around. And now we're going to see him overlay both Levier the Sea Dragons into the Utopic Future, 
uh, taking it to Ixie's monsters, non-numbered Ixie's monsters, and then Ixie's changing on top of the Utopic Future, Utopic Draco, which is 3,000 attack, cannot be targeted or... I think it can be destroyed by battle or card effect, I believe. Um, and then it can negate a monster effect, and if that monster was negated on the field, it can take control of it permanently. Uh, so it's an extremely strong card if you are able to get all the way into it, but as you guys noticed, um, that whole combo line leading up to this very moment was extremely susceptible to Nibiru, so you can see why some builds may be dropping that for the time being. But he will link into the Anaconda, of course, once the Draco is established, and sending everybody's favorite two vanilla monsters in the game uh, for this absolutely absurd card that really nobody likes whatsoever at the moment. Uh, the Anaconda into Dragoon. Uh, everybody's favorite play. I mean, I, I, I think uh, the Dragoon just got confirmed for the reprints in the 2021 tins, uh, which is a little saddening to see because that means Dragoon is uh, like 95% chance of not getting banned. So hopefully that leaves Anaconda uh, on the table to get the axe because it definitely deserves it. Um, I mean, if you want to make uh, Dragoon with Money Mud Dragon, be my guest, or if you want to hard draw the Red Eyes Fusion, be my guest. But the fact that any combo deck can throw it in at the cost of just two monsters and some life points, I mean, it's just, it's a little ridiculous at the end of the day. Um, so that will do it for his turn. Dragoon, Utopic Draco, two sets, which we can assume are both Fog Blades, and it looks like he has an Ash in hand. So one, two, three, four, five interruptions here. I don't know how our zombie Elvish player is getting through this board at the moment, unless he opened the absolute stones in those opening six cards, which, I mean, we'll see. I can guarantee a majority of them are probably trap cards, which aren't going to break this very powerful board. But speak of the devil, there is a super polymerization. I mean, we knew this card was in the main deck um, and uh, definitely is staying in here uh, in game two, especially since he probably knows his opponent is going to take first. And uh, I mean, this will do a good job at outing some of the field, um, but definitely the Dragoon or the Draco is staying. I don't think he can get rid of all of them. And uh, I'm not really sure what he... Maybe uh, the Draco Stapelia, I think, takes just two Dark Monsters, or uh, I don't know if Muddy Mud Dragon can come up here. I think that's two monsters with the same type, or same attribute, same type but different attribute, um, which I don't think comes up here either. I mean, he could suck up both the... Uh, Bardiche and the Dragoon because one is a warrior one is a spellcaster. They're both dark So I think that could possibly work, but I'm not hundred percent sure on what uh, Muddy or not Muddy Mud Dragon. Yeah, Mud Dragon of the Swamps uh, Summoning conditions are I believe it take yeah, okay, so it's two monsters with the same attribute but different types um, So I mean if you have so same attribute but different types um, yeah, so he could suck up the, the, the Red Eyes Dragoon and the Bardish for Muddy Mud Dragon, or Mud Dragon of the Swamp, not Muddy Mud Dragon, that's a Synchro. Um, but, uh, if you have the option to go for Drago Sapelia or, uh, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, I feel like you're gonna go for Drago Sapelia just because it's a bigger body. Uh, and I, th I believe it actually has a decent on-field effect. Uh, 2700 attack, level 8 Dark Plant, so that's what he is going to go for here. The Predator Plant, Drago Sapelia. It says, once per turn, quick effect... You can target one face-up monster point controls as cost, and then place one predator counter on it. And if it is level 2 or higher, it becomes level 1 as long as it has a predator counter. Negate the activated effects of your opponent's monsters that have predator counters. Um, so, not a terrible card to go into here. It might come up. Um, but uh, he is going to pay 8 for the Cursed Owl Land, and uh, he's going to ditch that Ash Blossom to uh, feel even better. Uh, to make sure that he does not uh, get the search off of that. And then we're going to see him follow up by normal summoning Unizombie. And uh, I believe Unizombie has an effect to like discard to increase his level. And then he can like send something from deck to grave uh, to do like sort of a similar effect. It has been so long, I apologize, since I've read some of these uh, cards. Uh, basically says... Uh, you can target one face-up monster on the field. Monster control cannot attack on a certain except zombie monsters. Also send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do, increase that target's level by one. Um, so you could go ahead and uh, dump, like, I think Necro World Banshee or the Glow Up Bloom, uh, probably, if you wanted to. Um, but it looks like it's going to be met with Fog Blade regardless, so not going to matter a whole lot. And uh, our zombie Elvis player is going to set two. 
And uh, I imagine we'll see him use the Hikaro uh, in end phase. So he's going to go ahead and banish that to grab an Elixir. Uh, and we're also going to see an end phase Fog Blade. Because why not? And that's going to bring back the Rusty Bardiche. I believe he's going to set a Scarlet Sanguine. Uh, so that will do it for his turn, I imagine. Oh, and also because Fog Blade was banished, he is going to get back that Torn Scales. Um, so he already has one half of a break sword on his field, and our Elders player is going to read the Draco Stapelia one more, or not the Draco Stapelia, the uh, Utopic Draco. So many Dracos on the board right now. Uh, one more time, just realizing how good of a card it actually is in this instance. Can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. It's going to be very, very hard for him to get over. And again, our Phantom Knight BA player already starting his turn with half a Fog Blade, or not a Fog Blade. Getting so many things mixed up, I apologize. Starting his turn with half a Break Sword, which is really great, of course, when paired with Rusty, because that will allow him to get two pops, and then, of course, the Reborn effect off of the Break Sword as well to bring back two uh, Phantom Knights from the Grave and have their levels increased by one each, so that sets up a rank four play as well, possibly into Raider's Knight. Uh, to possibly try and close this game as quickly as possible, but that break sword is going to be met with a judgment, uh, which is going to put him down to 36. Uh, was all of a sudden up in life points and now is not. And our Phantom Knight BA player is still going to be able to make another rank three here because he has cloak plus torn scales engraved, and that cloak is going to search boots. And uh, torn scales will trigger now since a Phantom Knight card was banished. And that is going to summon itself back to the board. And he's also yet to use Torn Scales effect. So if he wanted to use that, he could. So he will summon the Torn Scales and then activate Boots. And uh, see if his opponent has a response here. He's going to go ahead and activate Conquistador. Uh, which will allow him to summon it to the board as a monster and then non-target pop. Um, so that will clear one of the level 3s, I imagine. Um, although getting rid of Rusty isn't terrible either, but I guess keeping him off of Breaksword isn't so bad uh, as well. Um, so he will pop the break or the uh, the Torn Scale, and that will get banished um, because I believe after it is summoned to the field by using that effect in Grave, it is banished when it leaves the field. But I think our Phantom Knight player still has a way to yet again play around another interruption using gloves now in Grave to dump the. <laughs> the, the fog blade summoning back that stain grieve so through uh, a judgment through a conquistador he's still getting into this break sword and of course on the summon of break sword we will see him activate the effect of bardiche and i had to go back and check the original audio here but because uh, I was uh, thinking that Bardish would pop one of his opponent's monsters, but instead he's going to attempt to pop his own break sword. And um, our uh, zombie Eldritch player uh, makes what I would consider to be a mistake here because he has Utopic Draco on board, and he's literally trying to pop one of his own monsters. So why not let him just pop it? Uh, but instead, you literally let him just snatch steal the 2700 beater you had on your field. I mean, uh, I get why, but also at the same time, I mean, you could have just held that for a little later. Um, yeah, he gets to negate the effect of Drago Sapelia and also gets to take control of it permanently, thanks to the Utopic Future. Because um, I imagine he was going to bring back both the Phantom Knights. I guess the one nice thing about him taking is that he can't bring back the two level fours now because his field is clogged. So I guess, I mean, maybe if that's what he was trying to hope... Uh, you know, he would negate it and take it, therefore he couldn't bring back the two level fours. If that was his plan, then, I mean, pretty, uh, pretty next level plan, I guess, but, um, I'm not entirely sure if that was the move. I probably would have let him resolve the break sword, uh, popping itself off the Bardiche and then summon the two back and then see what he goes into off of that. But either way, uh, he's not getting around the Utopic, uh, or the Utopic Draco, like, that's just there to stay at this point. Uh, and that will do it for his turn after he clears a few monsters. And uh, we'll see what our zombie Alec player is going to do right now to try and recover. Looks like a very losing position here, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, he still does have Cursed Eldan up, which he will use. Uh, he'll pay 8. Feel great. And it will resolve this time. It will resolve. So we'll go ahead and see what he decides to add here. Um, we know he does have the Conquistador in Grave. Golden Lord is in Grave as well. 
uh, alongside, I believe, Scarlet Sanguine. So he does have a decent graveyard presence at this point. But again, I don't know if it's going to be enough. I'm actually, I don't think our Phantom Knight player has a Fog Blade engraved, so uh, he will not be able to uh, take control, or uh, not take control, but uh, reborn that Break Sword out of the grave, at least the one that was properly summoned, um, and trigger the Rusty effect. And it looks like we're going to see a Cosmic Cyclone activated. Um, using that after the curse, that'll land. And he'll pay a thousand to hit the fog blade that is currently on the Unizombie. Um, and then he'll try to activate Unizombie and he'll give it a Drago Stapelia counter. And this is all sorts of interesting here. Um, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know why you would cosmic the fog blade i mean i get why you would cause cos cosmic the fog blade like it's not going anywhere right now so long as your unizombie is staying there and in fact if you leave it on the unizombie uh the phantom knight player can't actually attack it um so it could technically buy you a few turns if he doesn't have a way to out his own fog blade um but looks like uh golden lord in grave will activate sending the uh curse out land off the board uh, and he has the call by for it, which is going to be the final nail in the coffin there. Um, yeah, the the Phantom Knight BA deck definitely in the winning position there, and the call by the Grave sealing it because, you know, it is one hell of a card. Uh, so here we are in a Game 3 situation, and uh, our Eldritch player definitely deciding to go first here. 100%, you do not want to try to play into that board uh, again uh, because it did not bode so well last time. We're going to see him open up Zombie World. There it is. And Necro World Banshee and one set. Um, so far, like the the, the most uh, you know different opening that we've seen out of all the games, uh, the past couple games, it's been setting a lot, but not really maybe seeing too many Eldritch cards here. And our Phantom Knight PA player opens up the Twin Twister. Um, you gotta love drawing them side deck cards, right? Those are definitely coming in in this matchup. Um, I mean, I. Granted, against Eldritch, Cosmic would be better, but then again, I don't know if our uh, our um, Phantom Knight player is siding uh, the Cosmics. Um, may only just be siding the Twins, but it will still get the job done. So it looks like he will chain DD Crow in response to the uh, Twin after he pays cost, revealing that he did discard a Seer. So DD Crow in the Seer is kind of nice, um, but I feel like there may be better opportunities to hold the DD Crow. Um, because pitching a seer like that in grave doesn't really do anything. Maybe if it was a graph, I would understand why, because I haven't, wouldn't have enough, uh, a chance to activate yet. Um, but I feel like there are better things you can hold the DD Crow for. Maybe I'm nitpicking, but then again, I don't know. Um, so we're going to see him normal summon now the Torn Scales, pitching wings, and that will allow him to go ahead and send one. Probably going to go ahead and send, yep, the Cloak. Cloak will add Boots. Boots will summon if he so desires to go that route and gets into Cherubini. And uh, it's basically a party from there. And uh, looks like he opened up a trap alongside one other one other monster. I can't tell exactly what it is. It looks like Skullmeister from uh, my perspective, but uh, cannot tell 100%. Uh, so it looks like, you know, as expected, he'll add the boots, summon the boots to the board. And it's also interesting that he didn't uh, get rid of the zombie world. Um, maybe that's playing around the Banshee. Not exactly sure what Necro World Banshee does, if I'm being totally honest, but I can go ahead and pull it up and uh, read it real quick. Uh, oh yeah, Zombie World in the Field Zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. Okay, that explains it then. That's why he didn't twin the uh, Zombie World. So, I mean, it will be sticking to the field for now. But then again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the commentary, that Zombie World really does not hurt uh, the Phantom Knight PA deck whatsoever. Um, so go to the Cherubini. Uh, it looks like he dumped the uh, gloves there, um, and uh, he's going to go ahead and use the gloves, or use the wings to revive the gloves. Uh, that's going to trigger Torn Scales to summon itself out, setting the uh, Shade Brigandine to link with the Cherubini and the Brigandine uh, for Bardish. Uh, so not using the BA engine here, which is really interesting to see. Um, it's nice to see that the, it can actually adapt uh, and play around something like a DD Crow on a Seer, not even needing the BA engine to easily step up into the Bardi shirt. He's missing an extra body right now in the form of the uh, the Cherubini on field. 
Um, but then again, ultimately, he really doesn't need it. Going to go ahead and use the Rusty Effect to pop Banshee. And then afterwards, since the, uh, the Zombie World can be destroyed, he's going to use Break Sword, popping itself to clear it, and then summon back both the Boots and and that Torn Scale. And their levels are both 4 right now because of Break Sword's effect. So he is going to go into Raider's Knight. And uh, he might actually be able to go for the OTK here. He's going to go ahead and Ixie's Change on top of it. Uh, for Arc Rebellion Dragon, and uh, talk about an absolute unit of a card here. This card has the effect where it can detach, I believe, and then gain the attack of all other monsters on the field. And then if it has a Dark Exceeds Monsters material, it can negate the effects of all other face-up monsters on the field as well. Uh, but I believe it's the only monster that can attack after that, so... Um, but I don't even think he needs to use that effect here because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be game with it. Um, so he's just going to use the Fog Blade to bring back Break Sword, and that is game right there. That is 8,100 damage, and uh, Phantom Knight BA taking it 2-1. Very swift game 3 there, and if you guys want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And like always, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the members that support this channel. A special thanks to our Divine Level channel members, and they are Cadillacs, 84, Pony Stark, and Keith Sidgers. Thank you guys so much as always for your extremely generous support of this channel.